Motorsports.com. All right, we're here with our last swamp cast of the year. Actually, uh, first of the year. First of the year, last of the season. And Florida, of course, annihilating Cincinnati here in New Orleans. Uh, I, I got to be honest with you, I'm, I'm really surprised that they were able to just, I, I thought they would be a good matchup for Cincinnati's defense. I didn't know uh, how well Florida's defense would play against their offense. Yeah, yeah after watching Cincinnati a few times, Pat, I thought Florida's offense matched up well. I thought Florida was going to go up and down the field, have a chance to control the clock. But you're right, I thought. Cincinnati's offense would cause a few problems, yeah. but the defense was definitely motivated after that performance against Alabama, and they had a great game plan. They, you know, knocked their timing off the routes and, you know, frustrated Pike. Got after Pike a lot, and uh, Carlos Dunlap did make a difference. He makes a difference. Maybe it was, uh, that's the reason they lost Alabama. Um, there's a lot of things, of course, but that game's not what matters anymore. Uh, nothing you can do about that. Certainly a uh, trying week for everybody, uh, for Urban Meyer, for the players, for the media. Uh, for everybody having to deal with all the stuff, the, all the rumors. And I, I mentioned this in my column, Robbie. It was like distractions were coming at them like dodgeballs. No, no. They had to keep getting out of the way. But, you know, it's funny because after that Alabama game, I questioned the professionalism and the maturity that Urban Meyer kept talking about. I questioned that because if you're that mature and that, um, you know, professional, how do you go out and play that poorly? How do you have get guys getting in trouble? Why do you but, drink the money before exactly. the championship game? But, but yeah. tonight, they yeah. showed it. This week, they showed that kind of came back for them. They obviously got locked in after that game. They lost Alabama. We're not right. going to let that happen again. And they were focused. You put them in, in the practice with their coaches. They don't care what's going on, apparently. They practiced for a game, got ready, and you know kicked a pretty good team's butt. Oh, let's not forget, Cincinnati was unbeaten coming in. Yeah. Here. And it's funny, I heard Chris Spielman say on, on one of the games today, Robbie, that if Cincinnati won, it would be the, one of the biggest upsets in the history of college football. And I'm like, Florida's a 13-point favorite, and yeah, Cincinnati's that, unbeaten. That, that wouldn't be the biggest. To me, it wouldn't even be close. It wouldn't even be in the top 100. But for Florida to dominate in the way that it was a perfect way to go out. You, you know, for Tebow, for the seniors, for the juniors, yeah. Joe Hayden is going out um, uh, among many. I would think the pounces are going Pounces. out and Dunlap. Yeah, we'll out. see. We'll see how, as that unfolds. But especially for Urban Meyer. He, couldn't take him to the loss, man. No. You know, it really was kind of what the doctor ordered. Yeah, it was. And, I mean, it was kind of one of those a stress-free night where there wasn't a lot going on. That his team was in control the whole way. Right. And I think he enjoyed himself tonight. And that was very important for his future and coming back here. And, again, he said in his gut, I'm coming back. That's his, yeah, his we'll plan. See. So. I, I told somebody tonight, the more that comes out on this story, the less we know. Yeah. And that's really the way I still feel. I have no clue what's going to happen with him, what's going to happen with a lot of things. No, but I have a feeling that he's coming up. <laughs> Pam Tebow. Pam. <laughs> Say Bye, hi, Pam. Pam. <laughs> Wave to everybody, Pam. <laughs> Wave to everybody. <laughs> but I think he's coming back, Pat. I, I wasn't sure about that before, but I think in his gut he does want to come back and he yeah. plans to come back. And I think he's going to get that message out to recruits here in the next couple of days when they decide yep. what role he plays in recruiting. Yeah, it's funny because uh, Tim, uh, somebody asked Urban, what he plans to do in the next coming days, you know, in the next few days, a few weeks, few months. And he, uh, he said he really didn't know. He's kind of eager to find out what he's going to be doing, yeah. what he's going to do to try to fix himself. And Tebow said, you better be getting ready to get killed in golf. Because that's what Tebow he plans to do. He wants a piece of him. So I'll be the third. I'll yeah. be fine with me. Well, based on what Tebow did tonight, I think he can do anything he wants to athletically. Exactly. And, and I tell you, he did show. I, I know, look, I know the NFL is a different world. In the NFL, people look at throwing motions and they look at um, you know different tangible things that don't measure the heart of a winner and I've said this all along I think Tim Tebow is gonna have a successful NFL career you saw tonight just what he can do well he looked like an NFL quarterback yeah. in every regard tonight from the, his pocket presence to Deep his throws, arm to his accuracy yeah. he was on his game and one of the best performances by a Florida quarterback ever Maybe the best. Yeah. I mean, it was it broke Rex Grossman's record, which I didn't think would ever get broken. No. Certainly not by Tim, just because no. they don't. Yeah. They don't throw so, it that much. Yeah. Broke Sugar Bowl records. Broke Sugar Bowl, right. BCS records. Florida tied its own record for total yards at a BCS game set against Maryland. And I didn't think that one would ever get no. tied. So, yeah, really good way for it to go out, and a good way for him, good way for Urban to head off on this sabbatical. Yeah, give him something good to feel about. Great for the senior class. Great game by Riley Cooper. We just saw. Oh you know, yeah. Just, a feel-good moment, a good way in the year for him. We were joking in the press box. Marty Gilliard basically uh, set he set the record for most kickoff return yards, and he, he kept stretching it out there because yeah. he had to keep returning. Well, he could have averaged 10 yards of return and he would have broke <laughs> and the set record. set the record, so. exactly, because there were so many of them. 
Well, that's going to do it for this season. It's hard to believe it's already over. It just seems like yesterday. Although I will tell you this, this week has seemed long. Yes, it has. Yeah, it, it usually feels it, like two weeks ago. About that we got five, here. yeah, five days into bowl week, you're like going, man, I can't believe it's blown by. Well, five days in, we were like going, we're still here. And it was and nothing against New Orleans, nothing against no. anything. But I mean, it was just a stressful week. And uh, appreciate all of you who emailed me. I can see me. the uh, stress on Trish's face as we speak. Yeah, she's got a little you bit. You can do of it, that. Trish. You can make make it through. Email Trish and cheer her up because she needs it. I'll uh, I'll forward all those nice emails that everybody sent me. How's oh, that? so that'll really lift her spirits. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's gonna do it. This is my last TV appearance for a long time. Believe me, I'm done with it um, after this week. But uh, Robbie, Andrew, Pat Dooley, we were we we're in New Orleans. We're not going to Bourbon Street tonight. I promise you. We're too tired. We gotta fly home. We're we gotta too fly old home and too tomorrow. tired. Yeah, we're too old. I, I'll tell you. Get me in the, get me aside, and I'll tell you some of the things I saw on New Year's Eve on Bourbon Street. Unbelievable. Anyway, that's going to do it. We'll see you next time.